The Inshuk Nation is a relatively small indigenous group in British Columbia on the west coast of Canada. The reserves are scattered along both sides of the Lillooet River in an expanse of traditional territory that stretches 100 kilometers north and south. But despite the past wealth along this route, today poverty is rampant and infrastructure dearly lacking. The communities exist in isolation, linked to surrounding rural centers only by a flood-prone access road, and these conditions have led 80% of the nation's 1,000 members to seek livelihoods in far-off cities. The result is a cultural drain that threatens hundreds of years of language and tradition. I first started photographing the Inshuk reserves in the winter of 2008, shortly after returning home to British Columbia following the completion of my photography degree. At that time the nation was in the early stages of treaty negotiations that would improve living conditions in their communities, and the photographs I was taken were to be used at the treaty table to illustrate the realities of living on reserve. Chief among the nation's concerns was the lack of electrification in their communities. Power lines had stretched the length of the communities for the past 50 years, put in place to connect the cities at either end of the river, but not a single line touched down in the reserves. In the spring of 2011, electrification was finally brought to the communities, and in 2012 I revisited the territories to see how things had changed. Despite this relatively recent addition of power, traveling the logging roads south into the territory still felt like a descent into darkness. As I transitioned from highway to asphalt to gravel road and finally to dirt, I was acutely aware of regressing down a hierarchy of accessibility. Cell phone service ended at kilometer marker 13, and my radio lost signal at kilometer 20. I rattled slowly down the road for nearly two hours, and as I turned onto the driveway of my host's home at kilometer 42, snow was falling up ahead, backlit by a streetlight that hadn't been there before, shining without the low hum of the family's small red Honda generator. The clock on the microwave is always right, and we can have ice cream after dinner, I was told, jokingly. while electricity had brought certainty to many aspects of life on reserve, issues of access and isolation were still very much present. I was reminded of the situation facing the community's elders. For those with failing health, the road acts as a conduit, pulling them preemptively towards urban centers where hospitals are within easy reach should something go wrong. As my host put it, when elders leave the reserve, the community loses someone who contributes to spiritual and cultural life, a person that speaks the language, and nobody fills that void. <laughs> <laughs> 